You also have other things besides bourbons and whiskeys that y'all make. You do a brandy, I believe, moonshine, vodka, cordial. Why go further and and, and kind of go the whole spirit realm? Man, good good, good, good question, man. <laughs> You're still uh, wondering that? <laughs> yeah, well, here's the story behind all that. We always wanted to be hang our hat on our whiskey expressions. That's what we're very passionate about. That's what goes well in the Rocky Mountains. It goes well with a, a day of skiing and after skiing called Opera Ski, where you sit down with your friends and you enjoy a glass or two. Uh, so we always wanted to hang our hat on our whiskey expressions. Uh, even our moonshine is technically an unaged whiskey, uh, so it is in the whiskey category still, although it's not an aged brown spirit, it is an unaged whiskey. Uh, vodka is 35% uh, of the overall spirits market, and we're very proud of our potato vodka. Uh, it uh, it's, uh, sells behind uh, our whiskeys, um, but it's a category that we did not want to ignore. And it gives us a lot of variability with the cocktails that we offer at our tasting rooms. We have two tasting rooms, one at the distillery and then one at the base of Vale Ski Mountain. Uh, so if you're skiing Vale or if you're coming through Vale in the summertime, you're going to see our, it's a pedestrian village. And we're right at the entrance of that. And so it gives us a lot of fe flexibility in that regard. It's certainly something we're proud of and are distributing as well. Um, but early on in the early days of this business, we weren't going to make a vodka. And then one of the uh, uh, instructors at Moonshine University was like, you know vodka is 35% of the overall spirits market. You sure you want to ignore that? And it's one of those things, in essence, you can make it today, sell it tomorrow, right? It doesn't need any mm -hmm. aging. And so uh, it, it helps it, and it's great. And I, I enjoy a, a vodka a dirty uh, on the rocks uh, every now and again when I'm not drinking whiskey. has got to take a break from that. So, um, so that's why we're, we uh, decided to make a potato vodka. Uh, our cordial is a sage peach vanilla cordial. Mm. We wanted something that... Uh, was uh, in the realms of uh, schnapps from over in Europe, and schnapps go hand in hand with the mountains and with the skiing culture as well. Uh, but we wanted to come out with a flavor that was not on the shelf yet, but that was locally influenced. There's a lot of peaches and a lot of sage in our in, the, in our state. Uh, the vanilla kind of brings it all together, and so it's a fun, delicious spirit. Uh, the cordial category overall is uh, very small. Uh, category certainly compared to the the brown spirits and, and vodka category and so once uh, once people taste our cordial they're buying it it sells like crazy at our tasting rooms but it's a hard sell outside of uh, when you don't have uh, when you're not getting people to taste it so um, but it mixes great with our uh, rye whiskey as well which is great 70% rye 30% cordial uh, is how I really enjoy it um, but it's along the lines of the sweetness of a Grand Marnier or Tuaka or something like that so uh, then the brandy uh, was a uh, complete, um, not an accident, but we back ended into it with my buddy that has a vineyard in Monterey Valley, California. His granddad started this vineyard, and it's huge, and they uh, grow grapes for a number of different wine brands. And he's like, hey, man, we have a bunch of Pinot Noir left over. Uh, do you want it to uh, distill off and make brandy out of it? And I was like, shit, I don't know. How much do you have? He goes, well, we have 3,500 gallons of this stuff. I was like, well, how much is 3,500 gallons going to cost? He's like, dude, I'm just going to give it to you. Take it, would you? And he's like, cut me on the back end if it sells, if it's any good. I'm like, okay, send it out. So it comes out on a tanker truck, 3,500 gallons. You can swim in this stuff. And uh, we distilled it off and then it ages on our ex-bourbon cask. Uh, and brandy has to age for at least two years uh, before you bottle it. Otherwise, it can be bottled before then, but it has, it's called an immature brandy. Um, and we're like, hell, we're just wait on it. We're in no rush to get this out. And so... Uh, we started bottling it a couple of years ago once it hit that two-year mark and it was recognized last year as one of the best brandies uh, in the country by USA Today, one of the top three brandies in the country. So, um, But complete, uh, making a brandy is nowhere in our initial business plan. Uh, until we <laughs> is your buddy charging you now <laughs> since you're well, running yeah, awards? <laughs> we, have, we have a good handshake relationship and so all is good. So, um, and so yeah, we're going to continue it and people are really enjoying our brandy and it's a fun spirit. Uh, but it's never anything I thought I'd be uh, I'd be making and selling. But um, I'm 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 a brandy fan. I really enjoy ours, so it's it's a lot of fun. And that all happened because uh, one of the military nonprofits we support, there was a a vet that had come through, and he and I became close friends. And he ended up getting a job at this vineyard. This was seven eight years ago or something. And then uh, his boss uh, became he and I became friends, and so it all just kind of happened. But from this military nonprofit that we support, which is kind of fun, so. It's amazing how you can make connections. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. 
And, you know, as you touched on this, you got the two tasting rooms. And, and truthfully, at a place like Vale and things like that, it's nice to have that plethora of options because you will have all sorts of people come through. What can folks expect when they visit one of those tasting rooms? And uh, also, I love that you guys do a fantasy whiskey camp, too. Yeah, totally right. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll touch on that, but let me, I'll uh, touch on the uh, taste rooms first. So uh, we're hospitality forward, Adam. Uh, uh, certainly welcome all, but when the military shows up, uh, we really enjoy uh, having them visit us and, and sit down and chat with us. We have a number of vets on, on our team, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think. And so uh, we've become the, uh, the military bar in Vail Village. We have, um, there's not another military centric bar and oftentimes uh, uh, soldiers, vets will be in town on vacation, uh, friends, significant others, a family, and then check, come walk into our bar and be like, this is the last place I thought we'd see a military bar. This is awesome. They end up camping out and staying at our place uh, for four or five days while they're visiting. And so um, and we really get to know some amazing, incredible people uh, uh, because of that reason. Uh, and then the, the tasting room at the distillery is about 30 minutes west of Vail. And we do full-on tours there. Uh, we have some, some great uh, military memorabilia there as well. Uh, and same for our tasting room in Vail Village. A lot of patches, a lot of challenge coins, a lot of unique gifts. Uh, so it's kind of a, a historic uh, museum uh, as well in, in the same breath. Uh, and so we love to, to take the time to, for someone to sit down and enjoy a glass of whiskey for 30 minutes or an hour and swap stories with them. And so uh, the tasting room in Vail Village is right on uh, Gore Creek. And when the snow's falling and the creek's trickling by and you have a glass of whiskey in your hand, uh, there's really nothing better. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little biased, but there's really nothing better. Uh, and then at the, ta at the distillery tasting room, you can get a glass of whiskey and then do a tour and uh, see how it's all made. Most people don't uh, know how spirits are made, and we, we love that aspect of it where we can introduce the process to people uh, and have them taste the fruits of our labor while they're seeing it all go down. So I just did a tour right before I got on the call, and the guy's like, I had no idea. Brown spirits came off the still, you know, clear as water, and, um, so, and that's a lot of people's reaction. So it's always great to introduce the process and educate people about how it's all made and how probably their favorite spirits made, um, whiskey or vodka or whatever it is, right? Uh, and so um, we have a lot of retail merch there. You got a lot of hats and T-shirts. Certain that's a big part of our brand, uh, making sure that uh, we pay a lot of attention and, and have some cool T-shirt designs and hat designs and whatnot. So um, a lot of people out there rocking our brand, which we always appreciate. So. Um, the actual fantasy whiskey camp that you mentioned uh, was just something I pulled out of the hat a couple years back. I'm like, man, if I was, I'd be into it. If if I was not in the business and someone's like, dude, you can come be a distiller for a day, I would take that up in a heartbeat. I'm all about unique experiences, right? And so uh, I was like, maybe we should offer this and see what happens. And so we started offering it a couple years ago. It's an it's an incredible day. It's uh, we start out at 7 a.m. so nice and early. Uh, make sure we get a Bloody Mary uh, to start the day off with, um, with some 10th Mount Potato Vodka, obviously. Uh, do a tour of the whole facility. Uh, and then we have everything set up. We usually don't necessarily do everything from A to Z on a daily basis. But when Fantasy Whiskey Camp is lined up, then we make sure everything, we'll do everything from A to Z. Um, and so it's from straight up mashing in, uh, milling the grain and mashing in and cooking it. Uh, transferring into our fermentation tanks, talking about the fermentation process, distilling off. I don't know if it'll be a stripping run or a spirits run, just depends on the day. Uh, and then uh, proofing that down to barrel strength and then filling barrels and then also dumping barrels, uh, proofing that down to bottle strength, uh, filling bottles. Uh, we have a catered lunch for it. At the end of the day, we finish with a cocktail class uh, and a whiskey tasting. And so we dig in deep on that. And uh, there's usually a cocktail or two at lunch, uh, and then we throw in a couple goodies at the very end. Uh, one of the bottles that was bottled that day, they get to take home, uh, and you should throw in a little merch as well. Just have have a good time with it. It's uh, open to one, two, or three people. Anything more than three people, it just gets a little too big. Um, but we actually have uh, one on the books coming up here in the next couple of weeks with a 10th Mountain vet and his two buddies are uh, coming in to do it. Um, and it's just uh, we open up the doors. Uh, and just have a blast with it. It's a lot of fun. So, 